while the discussion up to now has been restricted to the effects of wings, now we'll look at uh, the overall aircraft when one approaches the uh, sonic Mach number. So the first thing we're going to talk about is something called the area rule. Basically, this is a key tool for reducing the drag penalty for an aircraft at free stream Mach numbers uh, in the region of 1.0. And basically, this says that the cross-sectional area of a supersonic aircraft should be smooth. So no discontinuities. In A of X or B of X DX. So for example, something like this it might look uh, like the area profile of a supersonic aircraft. And figure 11.17 in the text has a better illustration of this. This can reduce the peak drag coefficient by about a factor of two. So this is something that was discovered more or less empirically, um, but has been found to be extremely effective. Now further, we've discussed the impact of uh, sweeping wings, but what about the airfoil section themselves? Ideally, we want to have an airfoil section that's designed specifically to perform well uh, at transonic conditions. And such airfoils exist and are called supercritical airfoils. Supercritical because they're designed to operate above the critical Mach number. So typically, we want a high critical Mach number to reduce drag by uh, pushing the drag divergence Mach number upward. But an alternative approach is to increase the gap in free stream Mach number between the critical Mach number and the drag divergence Mach number. So this approach led to the development of these supercritical airfoils. And just notionally, I'll try to draw one here. It looks something like this. The main features are that they're fairly flat on top, and this encourages a weak shock. There's a high camber near the trailing edge, and that helps generate sufficient lift. And it's this weak shock on top that really leads to uh, increased drag divergence Mach number. So most modern commercial aircraft use supercritical airfoils. And the development of the specific shapes is, is sort of a highly guarded, guarded trade secret. But it's important to re remember that for transonic airfoils or wings or aircraft, all the theory that's been presented so far as be being based on compressibility corrections does not apply. And we really need to use computational fluid dynamics to be able to solve for the details of those flows. And that's not something we're going to cover in this course. Um, but it's important that you know uh, that this is something you need to enter uh, that realm of dealing with transonic flows.